video, I will show you how you can take these three pictures and turn them into this. So just a small disclaimer, the software I was using to record my screen when I was editing the photos kind of uh, went out on me sometimes. So I didn't get all the, the editing recorded, but I still got more than enough to show you uh, the process that I was going through. If you would want me to, to have a full edit of this, I can do this again, but just let me know. But just to sum up the process I was going through here to, to get this photo, I was first taking several and different photos with different lighting of the product. This I will show you in a minute how I did. Then I took all the pictures into my computer and I went through them to see uh, which photos I liked and I didn't like. Then I took them all into Photoshop and uh, I masked out the parts of each different photo uh, that I was going to use in the final composition. When I made the, the composition ready, I did a mask around the product so I could work only on the product and not on the background because we're going to use a digital background. And after that, I took a closer look at the product and I could see a lot of uh, funky colors and uh, blemishes and stuff like that, that uh, I then um, went to, to correct. So I did some color correction. I did a, a layer with a unco certain color and I uh, tried to remove the color this way. And I also did the frequency separation uh, edit of the colors to to mask out some uh, darker parts that uh, was annoying me. I will show you this in a minute, just uh, don't worry. And then I uh, edited the top of the, the deodorant because it had a lot of scratches and uh, the reflection of the top was uh, not looking good. So I did a long edit on the, the top of it and uh, yeah, I will show you this too. Finally, I did uh, add some um, adjustments to to the colors of the background by using gradients um, and I did add some uh, some other stuff to make it look a, look a bit better but I will show you this so yeah let's get to it so this is the setup here I have my phone mounted on a tripod with a cheap phone mount and uh, behind the phone I have uh, set up my iPad because it has a black screen that can make a reflection and also I have set the, the background on my monitor to, to black and I'm going to mess around a bit with the, the color I think. So since I'm using my phone I will not be able to use a speed light so I'm using a continuous light which I have set up over here with the reflector. So soon I will cut off the light by uh, turning down the blinds but first I will go and get the product that we are going to take uh, some pictures of. So I got my good old Dolce Gabbana blue, light blue here and I'm just uh, trying to, to line it up so it's uh, in the middle and then we're going to play around with the light to shape the product. And I will be using a timer to minimize the shake on the photos and we will just take uh, some pictures here that we can stack together in Photoshop. So what I'll do now is I will try to, to move the light so we can shape the back of the bottle to get some clear edges uh, that we can use in the composite. So I moved the light uh, like this over here and I think you can see uh, now in the phone that we're getting a completely different look uh, of the bottle. Oh yeah, this is uh, a bit annoying with my phone that it's sometimes closes down the app and I have to start over again. So I'll go into to the app again and, and make the picture ready. But yeah, I hope you can see that uh, we're getting a totally different photo now because we uh, have moved the light a bit to the side. So we're only shaping the, the side of the deodorant. And we will uh, take a picture that we can uh, use in Photoshop. So as I'm editing this, I would just uh, say to you that uh, the whole setup using my monitor as the background didn't really work out the way I thought it would. So I wouldn't recommend you doing this. I just think you should uh, use uh, any background. It's not really going to matter anything because I masked out the product. So no need to do this. And of course, as I'm saying on the video, you should uh, move. Uh, I should have moved the table out so I had a bit more room to, to work around with the lights and, uh, and shape the product with the lights. So if you're going to do this, you should uh, do it better than I did. And as you can see now, I have moved the light to the other side. And uh, yeah, I'm a bit limited by the space here. I should uh, have moved my table out. I didn't really think this through. So at the moment, I'm trying to bounce the, the light into the wall and reflect it onto the right side of the bottle. 
and it seems to be working quite okay. So I will have to get some shots from the top with the light from the top. So I will just uh, handheld the light uh, from above and get some clean shots where the product is lit from above. So I'm trying to light the back as well, just to get some uh, nice uh, clean edges. And also because yeah, I'm limited by the space, I'm trying to, to get some shots this way. So just to get a decent exposed uh, picture, I'm also going to take a picture where I'm lighting the product from the side. And then I'm just going to use this uh, piece of cardboard that I got from an IKEA product to, to fill it side. And you can see here uh, how much light this actually adds in when I'm uh, holding the cardboard uh, close to the deodorant. So we took uh, quite a lot of pictures here and perhaps a bit too many. So I will have to go through and uh, decide which one to use and uh, I'm basically just enabling uh, one layer at a time and deciding uh, which of the, the layers I'm going to use and what I'm doing is that I'm looking uh, for colors, uh, light or sharpness and uh, deciding if the picture is uh, useful and as I'm going through this uh, I can also see that even though I use the timer I have uh, not been able to to keep the, the photos aligned, so I will have to fix that as well. And you can fix this by using Photoshop. Uh, it has an automatic function, but uh, I did this already and it's not really uh, working that well. So I have to do this manual and what I'm going to do is uh, I will enable two layers at a time and the other one I will uh, change the opacity down to like 50% or something. And then I can see through if, uh, if the pictures are aligned and uh, I will simply move uh, the other picture until I uh, get them aligned and I will have to do this for every uh, picture that I'm going to use. So now I can see the, these two are more or less aligned so I can move on and also I'm putting all the layers on lightened because that way uh, only the lighter parts of the upper layers will come through. So yeah, this is a tedious process. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, named the layers uh, for the parts I think that will be useful for, for each layer in the final composition. And uh, I still have to, to pick uh, among these on the, which I'm going to use. So I'm going to do this now and I will come back when that is done. So one step ahead now and I have decided on the, the layers I'm going to use and I have uh, used the mask on uh, each of the layers and masked uh, in and out the parts I want to use. And it's simply just clicking uh, the layer mask button and uh, painting with white and black on the parts that uh, I don't want to, to have in. Um, yeah, so, so these are the photos that I'm going to use for the final composition and um, I have grouped them in a group um, so we have them uh, all together now because that's the way we're going to use them. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, to make a mask around the, the product and I have already chosen a path so we will make a, a path mask and uh, now I'm just using the, the pen tool and uh, making a, a mask around the, the product as good as I can. And uh, yeah, this is a tedious process as well, but uh, I think we will get the best result this way because we want to make a digital background, and not use the, the ugly background we have now. So yeah, I, I'm going to speed this up again and uh, I will see you when this is done. So yeah, I'm just stopping here because my uh, delay I had enabled didn't really show um, this side of the product. so. I'm not getting a correct mask, so what I did was just going back to, to the layers and enabling another layer so I could see what was going on uh, 
here around the, the edge of the of the lid. So I'm just uh, correcting that. And yeah, the mask is more or less uh, complete now. So we will apply it to the group. And uh, now we got a clean image of the products. And I made a new layer without anything on it uh, on the bottom because we're going to use that layer as uh, our color background. And I'm just uh, selecting a color from the product and then I'm um, using the bucket tool to make it all blue. And you can see I had the, the layer of the, the group uh, not set to normal, so it was showing a bit uh, funny, but um, yeah, I just put the layer on normal and uh, everything looks good now. So having masked out the product and putting it on an all blue uh, background layer, you can see now that we have a lot of uh, things we have to fix here. I'm missing some of the edges and I got a lot of uh, not so pleasing colors around the edges as well. And of course, uh, some blemishes and scratches around. And also the lid is quite damaged and broken, so we will have to fix that as I said earlier. So what I'll do now is I will select the mask by holding control and clicking on the mask icon. And uh, then I'm going to hide the, the matching hands by clicking or uh, pressing control H. And we're going to use the stamp tool to uh, fix the, the part here on the left. And just holding alt, I can take a sample and I can uh, click the sample on the part where I want it to, to be. So yeah, I hope you can see uh, definitely here on the left and on the right, there are some strange uh, color on the product and uh, we don't want that. So I will try to remove this by using uh, the brush tool and uh, sampling colors from the product and then painting on top of a new layer that I have set to, to color. So, oh yeah, I just have to uh, select the mask again and uh, then we will just keep sampling the colors around the area I'm going to, to paint on and uh, try to remove this uh, yellow greenish tint around the, the product. This uh, is quite a long process so I will speed this up as well so you can uh, still see what I'm doing and uh, it's quite easy to see that we're removing uh, at least some of these uh, discolored portions of the image. So this is as good as I'm going to get it uh, right now, I think. But what I'm going to do now is just make a new layer with the U saturation because I want to remove the tint as well on top on the lid. You can see now that there are some yellows that we need to, to get rid of. So I'm just using this uh, layer to uh, remove all the yellow and we get this uh, more silvery uh, lid yeah, that's looking a lot better. So here at the bottom right, we still uh, see a missing part of the deodorant and I'm going to fill that in by making a new layer again and selecting the brush tool and picking a color around the edge. And then I'm just going to, to color it in by uh, first clicking and then holding shift and picking another spot that will paint in some color around the, the white edge here. And I think the screen uh, is somewhat off because I am I was clicking at the, the product and not uh, on the side. And you can see also here there's some white spots that I don't like, so I'm just going to paint that in. And no one will notice. So now we're going to fix the, the spots and, and scratches around. So I'm just using the, the healing tool. And so I'm just all clicking around uh, the product and removing uh, scratches like this. And now I'll go on to the lid and this is uh, a lot more work, but I will keep uh, using the, the healing tool and also the, the stamp tool and try to, to fix all these uh, areas where it was uh, scratched up. And also we're going to fix the reflection here because as you can see, you can see the my mobile phone and we don't want that to be in the reflection. So this is a long process, but I will go through this uh, step by step. But first of all, we're just removing uh, all these uh, bad spots. 
So it's just a matter of uh, preference and of course uh, how you want it to look. And I guess you know, but if you do something that you don't like, then you can always press Ctrl C and uh, it will take you back. So here in the middle black part, it's the same procedure as I have already been doing. Just uh, patching up and fixing the, the spots that I don't like using uh, samples from the sample tool and using the healing, healing brush tool as well. So, so far so good. We fixed most of it. And here we are missing a part, so I will add that in to make the edge around the lid a bit more even. And up here on the top of the lid, I see some colors that I don't like. So again, I will just fix this as good as I can. So this is uh, looking quite okay, I think. And now it's the right side of the lid and I will just keep working on it. It's the same thing I'm doing all over, just trying to fix and blend in the colors. So here uh, I'm going to fix uh, something that I want to be straight. So I'm just using the pen tool and making a shape real quick. So I will only paint inside of the, the shape uh, or outside of the shape to make sure I'm just getting uh, the colors that I, that, that I want. And this way I'm going to make somewhat straight line. And again here, pressing P for the pen tool and making a square. So we can work inside of the square. And if I need to work outside of the square, I can press uh, Ctrl I to invert the mask and then I will work outside of the mask instead. So yeah, a really uh, easy way to, to make sure you get straight lines. So looking at the top, I'm not uh, quite uh, satisfied with this. So again, I'm making a mask so I can work around this. And I'm just going to move the, the black edge because it's not uh, looking good. And again, I can work inside and outside the mask. So you can see the before and after. And uh, yeah, I think this looks uh, better. And of course, it's always a matter of uh, fixing it the way you, you like it the best. So doing it again to make it more even. And uh, yeah, trying to, to make the, the reflection around the edge uh, look more realistic. And uh, again, using a pen, the pen tool and masking to, to make a clean edge. And uh, then it's all about fixing colors as good as I can and yeah at this point I think uh, it, it's more natural that the reflection will curve a bit so I'm trying to make uh, a realistic curve here And here at the top of the lid, I don't like the, the red spots in the back. And also I don't like the, the black spots in the back here to the right. So I have uh, chosen the, the big layer mask that we made in the beginning. So I can correct the, the edges. So this line here will actually just use the line tool and make a straight line and choose a color that is uh, similar to the, the part of the right, and that will just make a straight line to correct this. Yeah, you can see now that you can always do uh, a lot more on this and keep going, but um, I think you get the point about this also, just trying to fix the, the spots that is uh, catching my eyes uh, from, and not looking natural. So I think we've come quite a lot of way now. This looks uh, really realistic to me. 
so we will move on. So a final thing that I don't like about this uh, deodorant now is the shadows uh, on the, the left and on the right of the product. Uh, so I'm going to correct the colors now by using frequency separation. So first I will uh, press Ctrl Alt Shift E to make a merged layer. And I will make uh, two copies of, uh, of this merged layer. And the first one I will call a color and the second one I will call texture. And I will just put these in a group so I have them together. And uh, on the color part, what you're going to do is you're going to apply uh, a filter called the noise and the median. And this will blur the image. As you see, this is fine. So we will press OK. And on the texture part, what you're going to do is go to picture and apply. So you will have to make sure you have the same settings as I'm using. You will have to pick the layer uh, and choose uh, the one that you have uh, called color and uh, you will change uh, the blending mode to subtract and you will have the opacity and 100, the scaling to 2 and the threshold I think in English to 130. And of course the channel should be RGB. And then you would get this funky looking picture but uh, we will have to undo the texture layer so we can only see the color layer and then it's going back to the blending by using the stamp tool and the, the healing brush tool and we will just blend in the colors bit by bit and uh, when you're using the stamp tool you can get these harsh edges but um, I think when you use the healing brush tool you can remove the edges and what I do when I'm using the healing brush tool it's just uh, sampling by holding Alt and uh, clicking and then sampling and clicking and just doing this back and forth and eventually we you will blend in all the colors and it will look uh, way more even. And I will speed this up a bit now because uh, this is quite a long process but you can follow along and see uh, how this works. So when you want to see how it's uh, looking in real time, you will have to enable the layer again and to make it look uh, normal, you will have to pick a linear light on the texture layer. You can see the before and after. It has changed quite a lot on the edges. So I will keep doing this until I have a more clean result. So I'm more or less satisfied with the upper left part and I will just uh, repeat this process for the bottom, uh, merging the layers and, and doing the, the secret uh, source here by uh, making this uh, frequency separation and uh, yeah I'm not sure there might be a better fix for this but this uh, works out uh, quite good I think it takes uh, a bit of time but uh, it will uh, look quite okay but uh, if you know a better way to do this please uh, let me know in the comments I would uh, like to know so now I fixed uh, the left and the right and we're getting uh, really close to a product that uh, I can live with. I could uh, keep it going and, and make it even more even, but I think for the sake of this tutorial, you will get the point. So of course, to finish this up, what I want to do is place the project somewhat in the center. So I'm just dragging the lines here to to make sure I'm finding the, the center spot. And this uh, teasing me a bit, but eventually I will uh, find the, the point where it's uh, sticking. And this is uh, the middle, more or less. So to finish this up, what I want to do now is align the product in the middle. So I'm just going to drag the lines uh, from here. So we get the center point and then I'm going to, to move the product. So it's uh, more or less in the middle. Then because I'm going to post this on Instagram, I will make a 4x5 crop. So it will fit nicely into to Instagram. So I'm going to add a digital reflection to the picture now because I think this will make it a bit more interesting. So uh, press Ctrl J to duplicate the mask and then uh, Ctrl E to, to merge the mask. And then uh, right click the mask and, and click apply. 
and then we can press Ctrl T and we can uh, move uh, the bottle down. And we'll have to, to flip it, of course, and we can uh, place it on the bottom so it uh, will look uh, somewhat realistic. And I mean, this is not a complete 100% realistic reflection, but I think that uh, most will buy this when you look at it. So I'm just going to resize and crop the picture again uh, because of the added reflection. And then I will add a new layer. And I will add a gradient. And it's important to make the gradient round here. And then I will press Ctrl L to get up levels and I will adjust the gradient a bit. And I will actually just uh, keep uh, adding layers and adjusting the exposure for, for each layer. And you can just play around with this. I will add uh, several uh, gradient layers now and resize them to add a different look. And when you have a digital background like this, the possibilities are more or less endless. So you can change the colors around uh, in the way you want it. But I'm just gonna leave it uh, in the blue color because the deodorant is named light blue. So at the very end, the only thing I'm going to do now is add some noise to the background and uh, also some sharpening to the products and then you end up with this so if you like this tutorial please leave a like and also consider subscribing to the channel it will mean a lot to me and i will see you in the next video bye